Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. For me, it's kind of been one of those days, but the day is over and I'm just having some fun. So I wanted to make a video about some practical things that you can do with Node-RED on a phone. And I had a good time making this video and I hope you enjoy it. So we're gonna look at five things and they're gonna start off simple and we'll get a little bit more ludicrous as we move forward. But the first thing is that when you put Node-RED on your phone, it gives you the ability to interact with things like physical buttons. And so I have the Raid My Lab button disconnected from the Raid My Lab system. And when I push that button, all of a sudden I get the message Raid Time. So, you know, as opposed to just touching the screen, you can get this physical tactile sense of interacting with whatever is on the phone by adding a simple button or some other form of external input device. So I don't know if you guys have seen this view very much, but over my head uh, when I'm working at the at the desk, I have two kind of DIY camera mounts that I made that can tilt and swivel. And then I have this little TV here that has a, uh, a Xiaomi Mi Box on it, basically a Google TV. And so that's a Chromecast device. And so what I do is when I'm videoing i cast my phone to that so i can see what i'm doing and i don't have my phone right in front of my face well i've never really played with the chromecast thing on here until today and so we're gonna put this on there i think it's 118 and then uh the message we're gonna go ahead and grab that from the message payload so this is kind of cool and if you picture this picture uh, i used to work at a place with a bunch of tvs all over the place and Basically, imagine being able to send out a message or a picture or a video to a couple of hundred TVs or 10 TVs or whatever. Like you can you can do that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change. We'll go ahead. We'll use the real physical button. Like we'll pretend like it's a doorbell. Um, and so let's see here. So we're going to change the message payload to someone is at the front door like this okay and then I'm gonna hit this and this and then I'm gonna push my physical button and it'll take a second there's a little bit of a of a lag someone is at the front door and I mean basically two seconds later the TV was able to, to broadcast that now if you click in here you can send any kind of media you can send an image you can send a sound file you can send a video file and you can cast it to the screen and you can even set the volume of it so that's a very very powerful thing and I think it's pretty sweet hey so I don't know if you remember but back in the beginning of the video I shared that I was having a bad day and I'm not sure about how your bad days go but when I have a bad day it is usually bad from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed and so I was in the middle of recording that last uh, section three and four and five and my mic preamp died in the middle of recording and so uh, the video the audio was basically unusable and so I figured that out when I was back editing the video and then I went back in and uh, I used some software and, and spent about two or three hours just figuring out how to how to overcome that and then I started recording section three again and the mic completely died in the middle of recording. So here we go, attempt number three. So one of the things I do is I back up all these snippets and I'll share these next three with you. The first two are pretty easy, but I'm gonna share the next three with you in the description of this video. So if I go to file and import, which is what you would do, and I paste it in there, I'm going to get this flow. And just to kind of give you an idea of how this works. Basically, I'm just using this start node to start and then every, on an interval of every, let's just say one second, it's going to re-trigger. And what that means is that every one second, it's going to pull all of these sensors. And so I did these a few different ways to kind of give you some examples of things that you could do. But um, what I did here was on this one, if you go to the info let's look at this here so if i click on just this one i go to the info it's telling me that the intensity of light is going to come in under payload intensity so in case you ever need to use this in a function what you do is you say message payload equals message dot payload dot intensity and basically what that does is that takes this and flips it up into here and basically makes the message payload itself 
the value that you got from that light sensor. And then we're going to just send that over here and the value is what's going to go on that gauge. In fact, I think it goes higher than that. So let's, let's do 300. So the next thing you can do is if you look at these, they tell you that the outputs are payload.x, payload.y, payload.z. And that is the amount of acceleration in meters per second squared. So when we do this, the other way you can do it is instead we're going to say that the value format is going to be message.payload.x. So in other words, you can just take this and obviously add the word the message in front of it and you can put that here as message payload x and you'll see on this one I did message payload z and so basically you're going straight from the sensor to node red dashboard and the same thing happens down here so so we're going to copy this and we're going to paste and I'm going to change red to API UI and then now you'll see that we're getting the uh, we're getting these readings now the decibel thing is not working on my phone right now it it was but it's not now so I don't know I, I no idea but um, anyway you'll see it so right now I've got the phone pointed toward my right and if I flip it around to my left you'll see that this magnetic heading changes and I'll go flip it the other way and it'll go back up to 300 and something and uh, and so yeah all these sensors I'm gonna tilt the phone I'm going to point it toward the screen so it gets more light intensity. I'm going to turn it upside down so it gets no light intensity. And uh, we've got the battery level. If I were to plug it in, we would get the uh, we would get the that this switch would automatically flip and stuff like that. So thing number three you can do is you can interact with these sensors. So you can make your own little gestures. You can make your own thing where if you just did I leave the light on in my office. Did uh, you know? Did somebody move the phone? All those kind of things. You can you can basically turn your phone into a bank of sensors to tell you what's going on in that area. So four and five are where it gets really interesting. And so we're going to start simple and we're going to get more complicated. The fourth thing that you can do is you can use your phone as a text to speech generator. So. What we'll do is we'll go to file and import. We're going to import a relatively simple snippet. And what it's going to do is it's going to detect was the button pressed. If the button was pressed, it's going to send out a certain message. And so to, to understand what's going on here, we're going to look at, we're going to click on this and we're going to look at the info and make sure you clicked on this thing here. And so what it says here is the example message payload it wants is the text that you want and the language you want. So you've probably seen this before if you've watched my other videos. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say, please speak your password, your passphrase. And so now we're, we're combining number one, interacting with a physical button, with number four, which is text to speech. And I'm going to push the button. We're deployed. Please speak your passphrase. And now you can hear that obviously the phone itself is asking me for a passphrase and so you can obviously put whatever you want here you can use it for announcements the point is that once you have the text to speech you can do all kinds of interactivity and that's where number five comes in okay so the fifth thing we can do is we can get super interactive and so i have basically broken this node in a few different places so that we can follow this logic step by step so where we're at right now is if I push the button, it should basically be what it was last time. We should hit the text to speech. Please speak your passphrase. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is we want to give the user an opportunity to speak their passphrase. So we're going to connect this. And if you think about it, we need to give about a second and a half for this to finish speaking. And so we're going to give it a, a second and a half. And then we're going to go to the speech to text. And if you look here, then it shows you in the in the example that you can set the language and the number of matches and all that kind of stuff. And so in this situation, we want to be really loose with the matches. We want to we want to have a good experience. So we want to try to grab as many samples as we can possibly grab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a debugging node over here before we go any further. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to deploy and I'm going to push the button. Please speak your passphrase. Test, testing, one, two, three. 
and you'll see that what happened there, uh, I jumped the gun a little bit, but we have uh, testing one, two, three, testing O-N-E, T-W-O, T-W-O, T-H-R-E-E, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so this allows us to deal with the fact that it may not be super accurate. So great, just trust me on that one. So we're gonna come over here and we're going to drag this down here. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna double click this one and this is kind of interesting. So we're gonna see if the code word is used and what I decided is that I basically wanna have a trigger word where if the trigger word is not in the phrase, then Node Red basically throws it away. So one of the things you have to deal with is that every once in a while it'll capitalize these letters and I could lowercase everything, but let's just, it's super easy to do this. So I'm saying if the message payload contains code with a lowercase c, or it contains code with an uppercase C, we're gonna send it out these first two dots. Otherwise, we're gonna send it down to the third dot. And one of the things that's super important is that down here, there's the option of either checking all rules or stopping after the first match. We wanna stop after the first match. So I'm gonna deploy, and I'm gonna do this one more time. And I'm gonna, let me clear this out. Please speak your passphrase. Blah, blah, blah invalid phrase so what happened was it did not detect oh i guess we should keep this attached it did not keep it did not hear the word code so it came down here and it set the message payload to invalid phrase and spoke the term invalid phrase so now what we can do is we can see if it finds the word code and then what will happen is you should see it come up twice because it'll come up here and then it'll come up in this debug node. So we're gonna hit it again and I'm going to say, Please speak your passphrase. Code red. So code red was able to flow there and let's see here. So none of the triggers, that's right. The reason why you didn't see it twice is because none of these triggers were met. So we're gonna take a look at this. But we didn't, well, what's important is that we didn't get the invalid phrase. Please speak your passphrase. Code red. So no invalid phrase because obviously we've made it to this point. So now what we wanna do is let's play with this one. And I basically did the same thing that I did in this switch statement. I'm looking for the word code, except right here, now I'm looking for the term yellow. So I said code red and nothing happened, but if I were to come here and deploy this and then say, Please speak your passphrase. Code yellow. Bathroom unlocked. Please don't forget to put the seat down when you are finished. Boom. So now what we're able to do is do some logic on this. So we found the word code. If we didn't find that, it would just throw it away. And then it triggered the word yellow. You can see in here, uh, code yellow, Kodak yellow, but it doesn't matter. Like the fact that it just found it in there was good enough to make the logic work. And that's why we're doing multiple samples. So if it doesn't know what it is, it's just gonna make a whole array of guesses. And as long as we're in there, then we're good to go. So we're gonna clear all this out. And that sent us over here to the success thing. So now the other thing we can do is we can actually get more interactive. So if I were to drag these down here to this flow and deploy, I could do this. Clear the message. Please speak your passphrase. Code Brown. Please state your name. Daniel. Attention, attention. Daniel has requested a code brown. Please keep the area clear for 15 minutes. <laughs> How awesome is that? First try, first try on the video at least. Um, so basically what happened was, if you come in here, it's looking for the term brown in capital or lowercase. And you can see actually in these situations, all of them were capital. So brown, brown, brawn, brown, or whatever, all those came in as capital. And so what it did is it went down here and it did another text-to-speech. And that's where it said, if you come down to this, it says, please state your name. Then it waited one second and triggered the text-to-speech thing. And so what happens is, the way this works is I have a PHP server that looks for, uh, picture this. So let's say you have a file called file.mp3. 
you can send a request to this thing and after the word sound you put sound equals file and basically what it does it checks to see if there's a file.mp3 and if there is it plays it so what I did in this situation was I broke up you heard it say it said attention attention that's one sound file so I came in here and it's playing the term attention and then it waits two seconds which gives it enough time to play the attention attention and then what it does it fires off an MQTT message and the reason for this is all of this is happening on the phone and I don't want this to happen on the phone speaker I want it to happen on the PC speaker which is where these two sound files are being played so what I do is I send out a message over the TTS thing and then it detects TTS and then it uses this um, node that I installed called say and it's node red let's see what it's called here it's called a uh, node red contrib say and so whatever you put in there hello world will be spoken out through your PC speakers or whatever it's installed on so so to come back here we're doing we're detecting code brown when we detect a code brown we ask them their name it puts out the speech to text asking them for, for their name or it asks them for their name it detects their name and then it plays the attention attention for two seconds it takes the text of the text to speech and sends that out and asks the computer to read that out loud and then when all is said and done it plays the final sound which is um, which is the code brown sound so we'll do that one more time just for the fun of it please speak your passphrase code brown please state your name yo mama attention attention yo mama has requested a code brown please keep the area clear for 15 minutes so I would love to see what you guys do with this. I think you can make some really cool stuff. And this is basically a $20 Android phone that we're using for all this interactivity. I think it's a lot of fun. I think that there's some amazing applications. And please share in the comments what you guys do with this stuff. Like, subscribe, click the little bell if you want me to keep making these type of videos. Have a great day.